Welcome back everybody, this is your quick tutorial on how to get yourself up and running with the Darknet NG12 badge case. When you've, assuming that you've already gone through and designed your faceplate for your face of your badge, you can go through and you can go export with that STL file. Once it's gone through and been downloaded, we're gonna go Gator Darknet Badge. We're going to hit that save button. Yes, we're going to go ahead and replace it because I'm rewriting these tutorials. We're going to go ahead and click this button, which will automatically launch your Prusa slicer. If you've not watched how to go through and install that in the initial setup, setting up for your printer, please go through and do so. All right. Previous, that was for the previous video. So if I click and hold my left mouse uh, button, I'm able to go through and spin this entire thing around while holding it down. If I want to zoom in, I can use my scroll wheel to zoom in and out. Now, if I want to move my plate view, I can press and hold the right mouse button and I'm able to move it this way. So this is all cool and dandy. We've got the 0 0.20 millimeter quality per level. Uh, right now we have supports, which is none. If you watch the other video, you can actually see if we rotate this upside down, we can see that there are two holes right now one for the screen and then the other for the USB plug. We're gonna change the supports from none to, you can either do support on build play only or go everywhere. We can hit that slice now button. We can now see the green, according to this is support material, which that means that now, instead of it trying to print layers on top of nothing or air, which would cause a problem with drooping, now you're gonna have supports being printed there, which is great. So now that we've got some supports printed for both the screen hole and for the USB hole, let's go through and change the lettering for the gator sign or what's actually lifted above, which you can see here as we zoom in, above the face of the actual badge face, we wanna put letters that are in different colors here. So uh, the cool thing with the Prusa slicer is that we can actually take this side and start going down and it's going to cut off layer by layer to show you that's just the face front, which is great. We want to go up one layer and press this plus button. So the base layer is now going to be orange in this example. It could be what other, whatever filament color that you want. You're going to be responsible for loading that up. Uh, in my use case for the example today, uh, the base filament color is going to be like a teal color. And on Mac, that's you can go through and click over here for the base level. But for your top level, you want to right click on whichever, wherever your slice is on this layer selection line. And I did a white as my example. So this is roughly what it would go through and look like. Uh, at this point, we can go through and press the up arrow button. And then you can see it's going to have a few layers of just the white, which is great. This is actually the same way that I went through and designed the Darknet challenge coins in years past, where I was able to do multiple layers with different colors. So you can get really creative here for each layer. You don't have to have a multi-headed uh, printer to go through and get different colors. You can just do it at different stacked levels. So if I wanted to get really fancy, I could go through and go down a little bit and say if I wanted another color, I could then say have white at the in between and then have like a, a red or a pink or let's say this fuchsia color, fuchsia on top. You could absolutely do whatever you wanted to here, but the important part is making sure that your layers, different layers are at different heights. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and erase this previous because we just want it all white for this example. If we're happy with our color, we're happy with the placement, we're gonna go ahead and the, we've got our enforcers everywhere. We're gonna hit, go ahead and hit slice now. It's gonna take 48 minutes to go through and print this off. And you can actually see it shows the print head going over through here and putting the excess or starter uh, material down to make sure everything's clean. And then it'll go through and start printing. From here, you can hit save G code file as name your file and then hit the save button. At this point, you can use this G code and either put it onto your SD card to take it to your printer directly, or in my case, I'm using something called OctoPi. Launch my instance of where I have my OctoPrint. I am using an older version, 
but for this use case and purpose, we're just going to go down. I've made a folder for all Darknet items. I can then go click upload and then grab my latest version for the Gator custom face badge. Click open. I can then click on this and then see my printer is currently in the, the sleep state, so nothing's on. The temperature will jump up here. The control is here where you can actually see the 3D printer. And then we can also see the, the STL layer first that's gonna be printed in the G-Code viewer. In our next video, we're going to show you how to go through and print for the first time, whether it's using either one of these STL files. We'll do an example and a sped up round of a time-lapse, and we hope to see you in the next video.